Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you. It's good to be with you all uh, this morning. And I want to uh, focus my time with you, uh, my sermon, from that passage from Corinthians uh, about love. And uh, as I was thinking about this text this week and praying over it, which I normally start on on Monday, kind of letting it uh, work its way into my mind, I was thinking a lot about an old song by Otis Redding uh, that you may know, uh, most of you in the room may know, somebody might not know, uh, <laughs> but you know, that's okay, church is for learning things, isn't it? So today we're going to learn about this song by Otis Redding, you should listen to it. I think you would like it. So uh, it is, uh, uh, it goes like this. Uh, I was feeling so bad, I asked my family doctor about what I had, right? You remember this, some of you? Yeah, I'm seeing some nods. I said, doctor, doctor, Mr. MD, can you tell me what's ailing me? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of yeah in there. Uh, and he says, all you need, all you really need is good loving. Because you got to have loving, good loving. Everybody got to have loving, good loving. A little good loving, now baby, good loving. Well, it dawned on me as I was thinking about that song. And of course, it's one of those that's like an earworm. Once you get it in there, it's just with you. But it dawned on me that if Otis Redding is right, there's, there's not just good loving there's either not loving or there's bad loving, right? There, the, like there could be some loving that's not loving. And if you're missing that, you need to get some good loving. And I was thinking to myself, we might be in a time when we need a little good loving uh, based on what we've all been through over the last couple of years. Now, Paul has been teaching the Corinthians, and if we've been reading the passage uh, of Corinthians, we're almost reading a lot of the book. If, if we, Every week we've been going through Corinthians, which is a great book. And uh, God is, uh, Paul teaches that God expects a different kind of community. And I would offer that Paul, in keeping with Paul's other writings, is really suggesting that there's kind of a law of Christ that governs the way in which Christians are going to gather. The, the, and that that is deeply rooted in his own experience uh, as uh, growing up and now uh, having accepted Christ and following Christ, which is, uh, and of course we read it this morning in our service, uh, the, to love God and love neighbor, right? The first uh, and great commandment, second life unto it, right? So that, that this really is a basis from which we can read almost all, I would say all of Paul's writing. In fact, especially these passages from Corinthians, this law of God that's pressed upon us, and that Paul believes that actually upon baptism, we are given the the opportunity, the capacity through the power of the Holy Spirit to do this work. It's not actually beyond the human endeavor to do the work of good loving as Otis Redding sings. So uh, as as we think about this, uh, I want to think about the community and what we can gather. Now, I'm surmising from Paul's writing what's going on, right? So you kind of have to look at what he's addressing to figure out what the problem was. And if we look at the book of Corinthians, what we would see is that they are impatient with one another. That's one of the things he says. He says that they are jealous of each other's gifts. Uh, they boast that they have it right. Now, we don't know what it is. But whatever it is, they uh, are divided because they all think they have it perfectly uh, right. And uh, that the others have it wrong. And he says they're arrogant and they're rude and insistent that we do it my way. And they're irritable, resentful. He's just got a long list. Gossiping uh, about what's wrong with fellow members. They're hopeless. Uh, They give up easily. And he says, none of this is good for you. This is not the way to live with each other. And it's certainly not the Christian way to live. In other words, no matter what's happening in the world, Paul's like, no, we're to be a different kind of community when we gather a different kind of community that strives to not be this way, 
but strives for the love of Christ among each other. Now, that's really hard, but he says, now look, uh, this is something our, our God wants. Love God and love neighbor. It's actually uh, a refrain throughout the whole of Scripture we now see today. And, and imagine the, the Corinthians, because I think this is what we would do. I, and I know it's kind of what I do most days, to be honest. So let's just pretend we're talking to Andy. And that is, our problems are way too serious for love to fix. And that's pretty much what he accuses the Corinthians of saying. Like, you say all this about love, but it's really, you know, loving really can't fix what ails us. It's like the contrary Otis Ray, right? That, that you can say love will fix us, but it's just not. No matter how good it is, it won't be good enough because our problems are so big. But here's the thing uh, that, that Paul does, which is, and I think it's interesting because he suggests that we have the capacity for this love, to live out this love. He's not going to let us off easy. Paul does not let us off easy. He says, you actually have the ability to do this. And as you do it, the more you do it, the more you'll be aware of God's Spirit working you inside of you doing it, in fact. He says, all people, you say, well, you know, I'm not sure that God loves you. No, God loves you. And he kind of refrains us. says, you've got to begin with the fact that God loves you more than you can ask or imagine. That this is something that's, that's available to you all the time. And that you actually have, even if you don't feel like you can belong or that you love, you actually have to remind yourself that God loves you. And that's, that's where, where you begin. But the other thing he does is he reverses it. And I think this is, this is interesting. He doesn't say, if you have patience, you have love. Right? That would be kind of the way we might phrase it. He says, if you have love, you will have patience. A lot of people say, well, if you do this, I'll love you. No, 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 that's not what he's saying. He says, if you love, you have patience. If you love, jealousy and boasting falls away. If you have love, you won't be arrogant. If you love, you won't be rude. If you love, you will be a partner in the kingdom of God. If you love, you will not be irritable. If you love, you will not be resentful. In other words, that if you begin with love, it will change the way you approach the world. It'll change the way you approach your family members. It'll change the way you approach your friendships. It'll change the way you approach your enemies and those who you don't particularly like right now if you begin with love. The other things become secondary. They become secondary. If you love, you will not rejoice at the failings of others, but rejoice in their best nature which is that you know God loves them. If you love, you will be strong and you can forbear anything that comes at you. I think, I think for us, we have to at this point say that actually Christianity has something very particular to offer us. Something the rest of the world's not really paying attention to. And that is that good love and actually can change the world because it changes the way you and I begin our relationship with other, each other. We don't begin with what's wrong with each other. We don't begin with how we disagree. We don't begin with how we think things should be run or not run. We begin by saying, I love you. <laughs> I love you and God loves you. And so we begin there, which is a, is a completely different way to start out. You are loved by God. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of belonging. You're worthy of belonging to a community. All people are. And what I hear clearly is that God loves you and God loves me. And that if we would begin with love first, and I would say, if you're not feeling it, then you should stop whatever you're saying and doing and remind yourself of it. And try to start again, again with love. So I really do believe Paul's got something here. And it's rooted deeply in what it means to love God and love neighbor. And it actually will change who we are and how we are in the world and how we are with each other. So if you find them, that you're tired of what's going on right now, if you've got some alien, as Otis Reddick says, 
Paul is our doctor. A doctor of the church is telling us. And what's wrong with you is you're missing some good loving. And that may be where you need to begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage. If you'll stand. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next.